Obviously, at the beginning, it's fortissimo, so we're supposed to be at the frog. And really at the frog, okay, and really, you know, in the contact point where fortissimo is supposed to be... talk about the prelude to uh, Bizet's Carmen Suite number no. one and also I am tuned to 442 in case you're following along with your cello. All right the prelude here it sounds I don't know it's very mystical right here in the beginning and it's very intense there's a great word it's very intense and it starts out fortissimo so important in this prelude and you're gonna hear me say it a lot here in this tutorial is where are we supposed to be in the bow? Okay, where are we supposed to be in the bow? Obviously at the beginning, it's fortissimo, so we're supposed to be at the frog. And really at the frog, okay, and really, you know, in the contact point where fortissimo is supposed to be... All right. Um, and making sure that we're using lots of bow, lots of arm weight, and of course, lots of bow speed, okay, primary, okay, in this thing. Uh, you know, remember, you know, your, your three ways of changing the sound, bow speed, contact point, arm weight, right? And we always mix them up depending on what kind of color do we want, okay? This thing is so intense, I said bow speed is most important, but this thing is so intense, you know, I, I like the word concentrated or concentrated sound like the sound is really piercing it's really going out to the audience out there straight out all right so I'm down here it's very tempting especially playing it by yourself here as an excerpt to play through the rests okay and notice we have all these measures that have the eighth rest quarter rest all right throughout them don't hang over in the rest, okay? Count them. More importantly than counting them, I would say imagine what the rest of the orchestra is doing, okay? This is so important when you're practicing any orchestral piece on any level. What are the other parts that are happening during that rest, okay? Sorry. We have this dome that happens down okay in the percussion and the bass down there all right and we have to feel that and hear that internally all right and that's going to help us with the rest all right um, and don't forget to imagine the opening you know you have the violin cues here the violin one with the tremolo and they're going all right when the cellos enter with this thing right so we want to imagine that part as well in the description there will be a link to a PDF that will have my bowings and fingerings in it that you could go uh, and download that. All right, so be sure and check that out. Um, and as far as the bowing goes, you know, I think this excerpt, you can have a lot of variants uh, in the bowing. I don't think there's any one way that the bowing has to be. Um, you could try to follow the the slurring and the phrasing marks, marks really strictly, um, but I think because it's fortissimo and just the nature of the excerpt, you can take lots of bows here, all right? So I am there in the opening. You know, down, up, down on all of them. Well, sorry, not all of them. We'll get to that in a second, okay? Um, we are lucky in this excerpt that there is a sequence of sorts, okay? And you have a couple of different fingerings that you can use here. And I think either one of them is fine. You can go four four one four one okay or however you get over to the a over here all right or you can do an extension four three one three i think either one is fine i like the extension all right if that's comfortable for you i think for my hand it's more in tune but all right if you feel like you're not getting low enough on that b flat Uh, sometimes, though, you know, depending on the size of your hand, when you go back there in a half position, 
how your fingers are close or especially up here in position uh, you might find that you're overreaching okay and that the extension really helps you play in tune by not overreaching right and you can do that on pretty much all these so on the A <laughs> And also by extending here, your first finger, you're kind of ready to reach back and do the little half step shift, okay? Because um, our hands do that a lot in cello playing, right? We're trying to minimize the shifting or shorten the shift, and so we might extend something, all right, and then do the little half step shift. So used to doing that, probably why I'm, I'm hearing it more in tune, all right? And on the last one as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the one that's supposed to be slurred. So we can be up bow here. Now I mentioned bowing a second ago. Make sure you are at the tip, at the beginning of this second line, okay? And then at the frog for the A, okay? The A is the top of the crescendo there in the second line. Okay, second measure of the second line. Make sure you check the PDF, okay? You should be the frog there, okay? And then letting it out and doing the diminuendo and using the whole bow and really letting the weight out at the tip so that we can exaggerate the diminuendo. So I'm tip here. Being at the frog and using a lot of bow on the A, I can really exaggerate, okay, the diminuendo. Um, if I'm being really picky. Okay, in this printing, the diminuendo ends there on the G, right? Okay, and then after that, right here on the F, all right, back to fortissimo, right? Um, and really intense. And if I want to use the same fingering, okay, so that I have the, the, the sequence, the finger pattern going, um, that might help me be in tune. Uh, but since there is a big rest here, we have the diminuendo, you know, on the F natural here, sorry, out here in the bow. You might want to think about, you know, fourth position here and then shifting down. I could still do the three, one, three, one, okay, but since we know where fourth position is, okay, and also second finger, and for me, that's where I want to be to vibrate, okay? So I'm inclined to start here. And then of course, over here, the D string. And then again, all one bow on the next one. diminuendo is longer all the way to the A flat. I want to keep the stuff that starts on the C on the D string, okay, for the intonation, for the intensity of the sound. Uh, yeah, over here in fourth position, all right, for these two little iterations of this melody. Okay, and let me finish what I was saying about the rests, okay, in between these things. It's going to feel on these rests, like you are stopping really abruptly. But I think that's the idea. I think that's what Bizet uh, intends for us to do, all right? And remember the other parts. We gotta get out of the way so that we hear this dun, dum, okay, in the rest of the orchestra. So don't forget to do the resting. <laughs> cut it off there at the beginning of beat two, all right, when you have the quarter tied to the eighth note and then eighth rest and quarter rest, okay? Let's talk for just a second about these two places where the bowing is different, okay? I have it written in my part, save, okay? Save the bow, reminding me, okay? Um, and in fact, you know, don't be afraid to write whatever uh, you need to in there, like maybe somebody wrote in one bow, um, won't well, no, won't say who that was because um, all through this thing we have down, uh, up, down, okay? This needs to be one bow so that the crescendo can start up bow, right? So I, and I gotta stay fortissimo, okay? So 
But, you know, if there's a little diminuendo at the end of those, I think it's okay since, you know, you want to start a crescendo softer, all right, so you have somewhere to go, all right. I think that's all right. I don't want to get too quiet though, so I'm really saving my bow differently than on the others, because on the others I could really use up the bow because I'm about to change up bow, right? So I can go. All right, but a much slower, heavier bow here, closer to the bridge. All right, when I get to this third one where I have to tie it all together. attention to that diminuendo and end it on the quarter note there since the second diminuendo okay and the second version of this goes all the way to the end all right so that we have some variation so that we have some difference in there remember focused sound remember to ask yourself where am I supposed to be in the bow where do I need to be to create the crescendo decrescendo color all right Make sure you know your finger pattern here, all right, so that we can play this thing in tune. And above all else, decide what you're going to do, all right? Whatever bowing you're going to do, whatever fingering you're going to do, write it in, put as many reminders in there as you need to, and commit to doing it that way so that you can practice and so that you can be prepared, okay? All right, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you have any questions about any part of the excerpt, uh, put that down below and also be sure to watch the video that is just the performance of this excerpt on this channel uh, which I will also link up in the description all right see you in the next one